12 is positive, so now I have to make it negative 12, plus minus. Do I have to calculate b squared minus 4ac? No, I know the answer is 0, so I just have to put a 0. Can someone tell me what is the square root of 0? What's the square root of 0? Nothing. The square root of 0 is 0. So, this whole part kind of goes away. Plus minus 0 is still 0, so we can kind of ignore that. Oh, and it's multiplied by 2 times my a value. My a value is 9. So I only, and this is kind of more simple to calculate because I all only have my one number in the numerator and 2 times 9 is 18. So now I have to reduce this. Negative 12 over 18. What number divides evenly into negative 12 and 18? 6. Good. So negative 12 divided by 6 is going to give me negative 2. And 18 divided by 6 is positive 3. That means my x is equal to negative 2 over 3. So both my x-intercepts, two equal x-intercepts, intercepts, my x-intercept is when x is equal to negative 2 over 3, y is equal to 0. And that also represents most probably the vertex of the quadratic function if you plug in your original function. Remember, you will be able to use graphing calculators on your test. So what I would do if I were you, I would do all my work and then plug in 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 into your calculator and double check that this is in fact the x-intercept. So this is a very easy way of checking your answer to make sure you're going to get 100% on this test, right? Um, okay, one more scenario. D is less than 0. This is a little bit uh, hard to wrap your mind around because we're going to be dealing with negative square root. Okay, so this is the one that I tried to calculate last time. Example 3, y is equal to 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. I'm going to need a lot of room for this one. So let's just put a few things on the board. When d is de less than 0, this is the situation that we're expecting for this particular problem. When d is less than 0, that actually means that we have no real roots. We have no real roots because the graph is floating in midair and is not touching the x-axis at all. That's number one. Uh, no real roots also translates to no x-intercepts because roots are x-intercepts. Okay? And what they call this in your unit guide, it's a complex solution. Now, the reason it's a complex solution is because usually we deal with the realm of real numbers. Integers, rational expressions, they're all part of the realm of real numbers. When you study further into mathematics and what we're, you're going to encounter in grade 12, is the realm of complex numbers and imaginary numbers. And what that means is things we can't really measure, they're not tangible concepts to measure. However, when we start making predictions, like predictions about earthquakes or uh, what might happen, we deal with like the imaginary world of numbers. And in this world, root negative 1 exists. The square root of negative 1 exists. We can actually calculate this with complex numbers. And the definition you're going to encounter in your unit guide, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. 
I is something in the realm of complex numbers. So this is a definition that you have to know to do Unit 13. The square root of negative 1 is I. And something that else you have to know, if you encounter the square root of negative 1 squared, so square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, that is the value um, that is equal to, sorry, negative 1. The square root of negative 1 squared is not positive 1, it's equal to negative 1. So I forgot to add something. If you have i squared in your uh, unit guide, i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared, which is always equal to negative 1. So many times on tests and assignments, students tell me, oh, square root of negative 1 squared, that is just going to be equal to positive 1, but that's not the case. This is complex numbers, and these are two definitions that you have to commit to memory, okay? Okay, that being said, that's little background information. Now we can actually tackle the question. We're going to tackle it the same way as before by starting with our discriminant. So D is equal to B squared minus 4AC. This is the scenario we're talking about. My graph is kind of not touching the x-axis at all. I know that my B value is positive 4, so positive 4 squared minus 4 times my A value is 3, my C value is 2. So we already said 4 squared is 16. Can someone tell me what negative 4 times 3 times 2? Basically, negative 4 times 6 is. Well, Ma, what do you think? Negative 24. Good. So 16 minus 24 is, in fact, a negative number, negative 8. So because D is less than 0, I know there are no real roots which could be enough, but if they tell you to use the quadratic formula anyway, prove that there is no real root. We now have to plug in all our information into the quadratic formula. So x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which I know is equivalent to negative 8 all over 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. Now, even though we have a negative underneath the square root, just like before, I have a radical. I have to simplify my radical number and eventually factor out the greatest common factor, just like I did in the problem, uh, the first problem, but this time I'm using smaller numbers, so it's going to be easy. So I have my negative 4 plus minus over 6. Let's simplify the radical. First of all, I'm going to take the negative 1 separately. How can I break down the number 8 into prime numbers? What three numbers multiply to 8? Does anyone know, Matthew? 2 times, times, good. <laughs> 2 times 2 times so, let's watch carefully. I'm separating my negative 1 over there, and now I'm just dealing with the whole numbers, 2 and 2. Now, I know this is a half of a 2, and this is half of a 2. So, those two halves are going to make the whole number 2. And underneath the radical sign, I'm left with negative 1 times 2, which is a negative 2. Oops, negative 2. And I have a negative 4 plus minus all of that over 6. Okay, what is my greatest common factor? Greatest common factor of negative 4 and 2, Marina? Uh, yes, 2. So this time actually I'm going to use a negative 2. I'm going to take the negative 2, or no, we can take a 2 on the outside. So I'm wet, left with negative 2 plus minus the square root of negative 2 
all over six. 